This study um, is based on the NOAA-CISP registry, which is a prospectively uh, collected cohort based at the University Hospital of Basel, um, including patients with atrial fibrillation and stroke. And we looked at them now retrospectively and at their echocardiographic data on left atrial enlargement. And we tried to find out if there is a link between being under anticoagulant therapy at time of the stroke, at time of the inclusion into the registry, and their, uh, the volume of the left atrium in TTE. And for the analysis, we included uh, 536 patients. Um, all of them had a TTE, and we assessed left atrial diameter and left atrial volume index. And we found that in patients with breakthrough strokes, so those who were under anticoagulant therapy at time of their stroke, um, they exhibit a much larger left atrium than those who were not on anticoagulant therapy. That was our primary hypothesis um, and our primary endpoint. And for the secondary endpoint, we took follow-up data. So all these patients have been followed up for uh, between one and a half to two years on average. Um, and there we couldn't find an association between left atrial enlargement and the risk for recurrent stroke. Actually, only the fact of being anticoagulated at the time of the index event was an independent risk factor and predictor for recurrency. Um, this is a little bit opposed to existing data on left atrial enlargement, but this data mostly derives from lower risk cohorts. So we're not sure if in a high risk cohort as in ours, um, left atrial enlargement is just not a good marker uh, to predict uh, recurrence. And we hope to find uh, more data in our prospective projects.